we're going to try to beat Ellen at her own game. You guys remember the Academy Awards and Ellen took a selfie, a big group selfie? All right, so we're going to take a big group selfie. I can't get all of you in there, even though I have a piece of toast for a phone. All right, so <laughs> we're, we're going to just try it here. I'm really white. I'm whiter than normal. All right, so everybody just smile or do something and say, People are going to really freak out when they see that, that picture. They're going to be like, what is wrong with John? Well, I want to start, uh, I don't have note cards, I have a toast. Um, so I want to start today talking about the global refrigerator, all right? And, and when I talk about the global refrigerator, I kind of want to give you a little bit of background about what exactly I'm talking about. And I'm talking about my students. And uh, I taught special ed for 12 years in Canton City Schools, and I had fifth grade students. And I had a big problem, and that was that they hated me. All right. they, they hated everything about me. They hated everything about school. They hated everything about reading and math and everything else. But for me, the biggest part, I could care less if they hated me. But I really wanted them to not hate writing. Right? Like I thought writing was a big deal, and I wanted them to not hate it. Um, but they did. And, and so I kept trying to figure out, like, what, why? Why exactly do kids hate writing? And, you know, I thought it was cool. I, I did cool writing prompts, you know, like, I go into class and be like, hey kids, today we're gonna do a really cool writing prompt. And they're like, what? And I was like, we're gonna pretend like today we're the it's a day in the life of the dog. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, and you guys are dogs. Right? And I'm like, so we're gonna write about what it's like to be a dog. So like you wake up, you lick your butt, what happens next? Right? And the kids just looked at me and they're like, that sucks. Right? And they're like, we're not doing that. And I was like, well, but no, it's like that's cool, right? And they're like, no. So then I was like, all right, so I did what every good teacher does, right? I went to the teacher store. And in the back left corner, there was the writing section. And I was like, there's got to be something back there. And the back there, there was a book, 730 writing prompts, two for every day of the year. And I was like, this is the holy grail of books right here. This will help. So I show it, and I go into the kids, and they're like, no, that sucks too, all 730 of them. <laughs> they're like, we don't want any of that crap. So I was like, well, what do I do? And I started thinking about it. <clears throat> and I came up with three reasons why I think kids hate writing or school. All right, it could be your classroom that they hate, right? And this is why, I think. One, they're not making anything. We've turned kids into worksheet suckers. And it's just like, here, sit down. Here's another one. Can I have another one, please? Please, sir. <laughs> just one more, right? Like, they're just, they don't want worksheets. So we need to make, the, they need to make stuff. I don't care what they make, right? If it's a blog or a wiki or a seat or, you know, we were talking about the seats earlier, right? That's really cool stuff. I don't care what they make. They need to make something. So we need to have them do that. <clears throat> And the other thing is we need to share it with the globe. Right now, if we're lucky, we get all these kids and we make them do all this work, and, they, and we say, hey, you're going to turn it in to me. Because I am the keeper of everything. And the kids are like, this sucks because like Facebook, Twitter, these kids are putting stuff out there all the time. And we're asking them to do all this work. And then they do put all this effort into it. And when they do, we take it and we mark it all up in red pen. Right? Some of you are like, mm-mm. Purple. <laughs> I use purple because red is scary. Guess what? Purple sucks too! <laughs> right? They don't like purple or green or pink or any of the colors because they know, they know that when you write something on their paper, it says, you suck. <laughs> and so the kids are like, this is no good. So they need to share it with other people other than you. So instead of taking it home and sticking it on your fridge, or maybe if we're lucky to take it home and stick it on their fridge, we need them to be putting it on everybody's fridge. Everybody's fridge around the world. And then the last piece is that no kids are leaving behind a legacy. You ask them, like, hey, you just graduated high school or you graduated kindergarten, because we do that, right? You're like, what did you leave behind? And the kids are like, gum <laughs> under the desk. And one kid's like, oh, I left my book in the locker, the one I told you I lost the third day of school. It's still there. Right? They don't leave anything behind. They're not making anything and creating anything and sharing anything for all those kids that are coming up behind them. And that's a problem. So how did I do this with my group of kids? Well, iBooks author was introduced in 2012. And I basically said to the kids, hey, your writing is so bad. <laughs> and it's been so bad for a long time. And it will probably always be so bad that today we're going to write a book. And they're kind of looking at me like, what? Like you guys are like, huh? For the world. And that way I know that other people can see how bad your writing is, and then I know I'm not alone. <laughs> it's not just me. And the kids, are, and they're like, what? They're really confused. And they're like, well, this one kid is like, well, if we write a book for the world, don't you think we should try to make it better? And I was like, aha, yes, you should. 
So then we started talking about it, and we went through this process, and we worked on these books together for you know, a couple weeks, and we put it all together. And we took the kids' best parts and the worst parts, and we threw those in the trash. We put the best parts all together until we came up with a book. And we published it, The Two Kids and Desert Town, available now for free. It was really cool. And we had like 1,500 downloads right away. You know, my principal comes up to me, and he's like, hey, did you cover any standards? And I was like, we wrote a book! What do you mean standards? And I went and got my standards booklet and I highlighted 77 of them that we covered in two weeks. I was like, here, is that enough? That's why I'm in Alliance now. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't get fired. Right? So, so we covered lots of standards. And so like, we had this book and the kids, after they wrote the first book, they were like, well, can we do another one? And I'm like, what? Sure. Right? Let's do that. And, and so far, in the last almost three years, I'm not sure where I'm at on time. I heard that timer's wrong. But like in... In the, in the last almost three years, we've published 42 student-written books. And we've had nearly 28,000 downloads. That'll change after today, because you guys are all going to go home, and you're going to download that book. 28,000 downloads of these books in 48 countries around the world. And that's pretty powerful to kids. You know, it's either I read it, or 28,000 other people read it. All right, that's pretty powerful stuff. So my kind of my final thoughts, kids need to create, they need to make. If they're not creating and they're not making things, they're missing the boat. Kids need to share. You need to share for them. Again, because if you're not sharing, then what's the point? What's the point of all this hard work that they do? And then the last piece is that the kids need to have a sense of this, this globe. Because I ask my kids all the time, I'm like, you know, fifth graders, I'm like, hey, what state do you live in? And they're like, Canton. And I'm like, no, it's just not right. You know, and I'm like, all right, let's try an easier one. What city do you live in? And they're like, ah, uh, <laughs> Star County. And I'm like, wrong again, right? And I'm like, because they have no sense of what's outside of their little walls. And so we need to open up the globe to them. And like I said, instead of us putting the papers on the fridge or the parents putting the papers on the fridge, we need to put the papers on everybody's fridge. So I'll leave you with one little quote. And that is that when children create for the world, they make it, or I'm sorry, when children create for the world, they make it good. When children only create for their teacher, they make it good enough. You can find all of our class books on tinyurl.com uh, slash class iBooks. It looks like classy books, but it's class iBooks. So thank you. <laughs>